Good afternoon. My name is Derek Gay, and I'm honored to have served as a Guild Board Trustee for the past three years. Today, however, I speak primarily from the lens of someone who has had the great fortune of knowing this year's 2020 National Leadership Award recipient, Rhiannon Giddens, whom I've known for the last 25 years. I can't quite recall when I first met Rhiannon, if it was in the Oberlin Conservatory Lounge, where the voice students understood uh, was a practice room, or during one of our many Black conservatory student concerts or informal gatherings. But one thing is certain, I am a better person because of our friendship. When I think about Rhiannon, many words come to mind. Certainly she is an incredible artist. I also um, appreciate her velvet voice and irrespective of the genre, she has that beautiful voice. And keep in mind when I met her, she was primarily singing Romeo and Juliet and Bohème and Così Fan Tutte. She does an amazing uh, Come Scoglio. She is an intellectual. I think of the deep scholarship that informs her, her work. She is innovative and constantly thinking outside of the box and critics, critics are, uh, are grappled. They, they, they can't quite describe her music using conventional categories. She is proud. She's proud of her North Carolina roots, her, her black heritage, she's proud of her family. And she's someone who cares deeply, someone who's a change agent for human rights, for racial justice, for social justice, for all, and the list goes on. But the word that continues to resonate in capturing the essence of Rhiannon is is authentic. The Rhiannon that you see as executive director of Silk Road is the same Rhiannon that performs at Carnegie Hall, is the same Rhiannon that I had Dominican food with in New York City a few years ago, or tater tots many, many years back in Oberlin. In her own words, Rhiannon said, when people hire me, they need to know that I will bring my full self and I will call out injustice and what an appropriate framing for our Leadership Award. The National Leadership Award was created in 1973 and is conferred annually to an individual or institution whose work is nationally recognized as exemplifying and promoting the ideals to which the National Guild and its members are dedicated. Leadership, equity, community, and creativity. This award recognizes Rhiannon Giddens' commitment to grounding American music in its historical black roots and visionary work to reclaim and restore past narratives and voices, disrupt current injustices and co-create the future through music making. With this framing in mind, I can't think of any better recipient than my good friend, Rhiannon Giddens. Hi, thank you so much, um, Derek. It's it's uh, it's so lovely to see you. I wish I could see everyone, but we are accepting the limitations of our technology. I would also like to thank the National Guild for Community Arts Education for this award. Um, when Derek and I went to Oberlin, uh, it would I had no idea I would be sitting here uh, talking to you today. Um, when I was when I went to Oberlin, I wanted to be an opera singer. That's what I knew. That's that's why I went. It's uh, I had been going to a math and science high school, and I discovered singing, and I that was it. I was well, I discovered operatic singing, and I was I was done, you know. And I remember the brochure for Oberlin. It said it had a picture of the globe, the beautiful um, gem of the earth. And it said one person can change the world. We, um, and I, I heard that so clearly, but I didn't know what it was going to come to mean to me until years after Oberlin. Um, and I got the opportunity to really discover what changing the world can mean. And I, I don't know how much I've changed the world. I think I've changed little bits of it. But that's all we can all do is change little bits in our corner and through the action of all of us, we do change the world. Um, so when I graduated, 
Oberlin and came back home to North Carolina trying to figure out what could I do with my music? What could I do as an operatic soprano that a million other operatic sopranos couldn't do better than me? Um, I discovered the beauty of community music making and how I discovered it was through uh, traditional dance, folk dance, but specifically I discovered it through a man named Joe Thompson. And he and the mission that came from him changed my life. And so I think about what all the organizations in the Guild do. And I think about how important that is because I had this experience with Joe Thompson. He was 86 when I met him, African-American fiddler, one of the last, uh, probably the last black fiddler of what used to be a vast and, and thriving black string band tradition all, all over the United States, but particularly in the South um, that had been passed down through an oral tradition um, since the times of slavery. And he was the last member of his family and they were community musicians. The Thompson family band played for the black dances. They played for the white dances. They were in their community. And so when myself and the other original members of the Carolina Chocolate Drops started to go, go to Joe's house to learn his family's music, it started our career, but it started our career in the right way, in my opinion. I'm so grateful for that because what it did is it put us in the right spot that spot of, of music and art as service to the community. That's what Joe did. That's what kept him going. And even when he started performing with his cousin, you know, he would, he would play music with anybody who, who wanted to play, you know, black, white, whatever. If they wanted to come play music, he would play. So he was a teacher his whole life. You know, he was a teacher, he was a leader. He was a, he was a cultural um, mentor and, and carrier of tradition. And so that is kind of the lens that I now look at everything through. And so I had the rigorous training of Oberlin kind of married to the community based idea of what folk music is. And so I'm really grateful for that because it brings me 20 years later to be in a position where those things come together in things like, you know, um, the opera that I'm that I've been, you know, uh, creating for uh, the Spoleto Festival about Omar bin Said. Uh, my work, now, hopefully, you know, uh, uh, just started now, but with the Silk Road Ensemble, um, to be able to continue to put those worlds together, but then to figure out how to bring that even firmly more to the community, because you got to have both pieces. And I think that um, organizations that are bringing the music and the arts to the people in the community, they are the lifeblood, I think, of any culture because the way that music and art has been commodified, has been commercialized, the ego that was a long career to be able to be at the top of a, a pyramid is kind of an antithesis to what community music and art organizations are doing, trying to break down that us versus them mentality. Like we create the art, you consume the art. And the more that we can break that false wall down, the more that we can, you know, make people realize that everybody can make art, everybody can make music, and it needs to be a part of our daily lives because we need it to live. You know, we don't need to have money to buy the music. We need to be able to make the music. We don't need a job so that we can buy the art. We need to be able to make the art. And there's nothing wrong with wanting, you know, art by somebody who's you really like and who's really good at it. But we also have to be able to create it because then, you know, that's that is what goes into every aspect of our society. So I am thrilled to be recognized by such an important organization. I just think it's the work that I've done in schools, you know, the, the Carolina Chocolate Drops started in, in elementary, middle and high schools all over North Carolina. That's how we got our start. Um, the work that we've done, that I've done with uh, universities, the work that I've done in prisons, that's the work that I feel like, you know, on, on my deathbed, I'll be thinking about. It's the, 
the the uh, the fancy places and the and the whatever all you know all that stuff is fun, but the real work has has always been with people right there who may not have all the opportunities to either make it or to consume it, but who need it just the same as everyone else. So um, I, I didn't write a speech. I'm just kind of talking to you and I hope that's okay. I'm not going to talk for longer, um, but I just want to say that I think we need it so And I hope that we can take advantage of the arts community can take advantage of what has happened during this pandemic and really reconsider what is our art doing? If our art is not serving, art is not part of the larger community. If, you know, if we're not connected to folks, you know, if we're not connected to what's going on in the world, what is our art for? And so I just hope that it brings more people into the fold of art as service and art as humanity. So I just wanna say, Again, thank you so much for this wonderful recognition. I will continue to keep being dying breath and uh, whatever I can do for, for any of y'all, I just let me know. And I uh, hope the rest of this meeting goes well. Thank you so much.